Hi folks, hope you're okay. Today we're looking at um, date and authorship of the Gospels uh, published by J.P. Holding. Uh, so it's quite an extensive document. Uh, I'm just going to read a few for a few minutes and just give my thoughts on it. So that's J.P. Holding, uh, the authorship uh, date and authorship of the Gospels, you can get that on his website. Just type in date and authorship of the Gospels, JP Holding, and you can read quite an extensive article on the uh, date and authorship of the Gospels. So he writes, um, Somebody said uh, the Gospels are, are, are all late documents written between 7100, some say even 2nd century. The Gospels are the products in various places of the author's imagination. So he is rebutting these charges. The authorship and date are important but equally important if not more is whether or what is in the gospel is true regardless of who wrote the gospels and when if they reflect reality correctly then it points to their being written by eyewitnesses or having eyewitnesses. Thus even if the traditional authorship and earlier dates are disproved and it is my contention that the argument against them are inadequate, it matters very little. We may surmise who wrote them and when. Hengel uh, notes that we have only one biography of Muhammad written within 212 years after his death, which used a source from about 100 years after his death, and yet the historical scepticism of critical European scholarship is sus substantially less where Ham Muhammad is concerned. Very important point to make. Critical arguments about the authorship and date of the Gospel reserve, resolve around the same data and have resolved around it for a long time. With very few exceptions, critics and sceptics have used the same arguments against the traditional date over and over. In my survey of the literature, I found that the standard critical arguments have been overused by sceptics and sufficiently answered by traditionalists, yet the critics have not designed to answer the counter-arguments except rarely and then only with bold dismissals. Also of relevance, Glenn Miller has contributed two excellent responses to James Still here and here and here. Gospel authors' general considerations. The anonymity of the Gospels is authors is something that many critics claim, yet I have noticed that in making this argument Critics have never explained to us how their argument would work if applied equally to secular ancient documents whose authenticity and authorship is never or is no longer questioned but are a very bit as anonymous in the same sense that the Gospels are. If it is objected that the Gospel authors nowhere name themselves in their text, and this is a very common point to be made even among traditionalists, then this applies equally to numerous other ancient documents such as Tacitus' Annals. Annals, uh, or other contribute attributions are found not in this, in the text proper, but in title, just like the Gospels. Critics may claim that these are were added later to the Gospels, but they need to provide textual evidence of this. And obviously, a copy of Matthew with no title attribution to Matthew and data earlier or enough to suggest that it was not simply a late, accidental omission. At any rate, why is it not supposed? that the titles were added later to the secular work as well. <clears throat> in order for readers to appreciate the magnitude of the situation, I would like to present here a listing of external evidences for the authorship of the work of Tacitus. I wish to thank Roger Pierce for helpfully sending me copies of relevant pages from the works of the Tatian scholar Mendel from Tacitus. The man and his work. Mendel surveys, surveys evidence for knowledge of Tacitus throughout history. We will only look at evidence up to the 6th century, for reason noted in Meldon below. In doing this, we should challenge potential respondents to compare this record to that of the Gospels. We will present Mendel's comments and interperse our own. The, the, annals, the Annals were probably published in 116 the last of the works of Tacitus to appear, only Pliny of Tacitus' contemporaries mentioned him, and his writings and the evidence of subsequent use up to the time of uh, Bacasio is slight. 
It is not true, however, that Tacitus and his writings were practically unknown. They were neglected, possibly in part at least because of his strong re Republican bias on the one hand, and because on the other the Church Fathers felt it to be unfair to Christianity. For Piscus, in the life of the Emperor Tacitus, chapter 10, indicates that the state of affairs in the 3rd century, Cornelium Tatticus Scriptorum Historia Augustia Quata Paternum Sum Undem Discreti in Obinibus Bibliocetus Conclori Uesti Neve Lectorium in Cori de Paret Liberum Per Annos Singolos De Si Scriptus Polecus, etc., etc. The text is obviously corrupt in the reading of Ephacus Achilles. Nevertheless, Tacitus is mentioned or quoted in each century down to and including the 6th. In fact, the 7th and 8th are the only centuries that have as yet furnished no evidence of knowing him. The following are known references to Tacitus or use of Tacitian material after the day of Tacitus and Pliny until the time of Bacchione. The material was well collected in 1888 and published in uh, Welser's by Emmerich Cornelius, but a considerable amount of new material has turned up from time to time. About the middle of the second century of Ptolemy, uh, Ptolemy published his uh, uh, Gewigra Gewigraphy, I think it sounds German. <laughs> Uh, I don't I, I don't know what that word is. G e w g r a f i k h with an and. Um, Muller Paris, eighteen eighty three. He lists in succession on, along the northern shore of Germany, the towns of Ful Fulham and Saitono. The later name occurs nowhere else and has dubious sound. The explanation will be found in Tatticus in his book in uh, Annals 472 uh, and he gives the, um, the Latin. The governor of Lower Germany takes prompt action on account of which winds up. The source of Ptolemy mistakes it is obvious. Now here, the Ptolemy's obvious use of Tatticus is taken as a signal of the annals existing or annals existing annals existing this is in stark contrast to how quotes in patristic writers from the gospels are excused away as floating independent tradition rather than evidence of the gospels note as well that Ptolemy does not name Tacitus we still do not have an attribution of authorship to work with some 450 years after his writing so what he's saying here is when scholars are using uh, Tacitus book, uh, how do they know it's Tacitus? Well, they have a quote from Ptolemy, and it's like 50 years after, and he doesn't actually name Tacitus, and it's obvious that he's using Tacitus. And so we know that Tacitus wrote his book because of the quotations that are being used from his, his, his book. And um, when we come to the early church fathers, when they quote the Gospels, they're just dismissed out of hand. They're naming the sources, as well as the specific information, but they're dismissed as not being of any historical value to whether the Gospels were written by the certain writers. And so there's a, there's a, a, a disingenuousness going on by the critics the same standards that's being used to look at secular historians of ancient times is not being used when it comes to looking at the Gospels. Very, very interesting study, isn't it, really, I think? It's hard to believe that uh, Casido Dua, who published shortly after AD 200, did not know at least the Agricola, in 38, 50 and 60 and 20 he mentions Julius Agricola as having proved Britain to be an island and the later instant tells the story of the uh, 
fugitive or sippy. If we make allowance for the method of Tacitus which leaves his account far from clear and for the use of a different language by a duo, there can be little if any doubt that Tacitus is the source of duo, uh, dio. We know also of no other possible source today. The last part of the section dealing with Agracol's return and death confirms the conclusion that Dio drew from Tacitus and it sounds as though Tacitus had left the impression he desired. Notice we still do not have any attribution and we are now 80 or more years past the publication of this work by Tacitus. We are already at, a, at or past the number of years Papias was from the Gospels. In the 3rd century, Tertullian cites Tacitus with a hostile tone. He spoken without respect to the Jews and implied that the Christians were an undesirable sect of the Jews. It is not surprised, therefore, to have Tertullian early 3rd century after him as Ili Mendraco Laximius. The apologist is defending the Christian against the charge that they worshipped an ass. The origin of this scandal he ascribes to Tacitus in Histories 539. Polygectus 16. This is the first direct attribution of some something to Tacitus. Apparently, 100 years later, Tertullian also cited Tacitus in two other places. Lactinius, in the time of Diocletian, in at least once in in his book, somewhat reminiscent of Tacitus style, but that is far as it is safe to go in claiming him as a reader of Tacitus, in spite of something of a resemblance between Lactinius. At about the same date, Uminius of Otton in the uh, Pengraeus of Constantinium 9 quite clearly has Agric 12 before him. He follows Tatus in the error of thinking that the nights are always short and he assigns a reason the same that the Romans had. Not only the actual quotation from Tatus is of interest but the careful substitution of synonyms. So we go on and on and on and on and on. And it and goes on in quite in depth. I, I'm going to So it's quite a, a massive article this. Uh, so we'll get to uh, the bibliography is quite extensive so we'll just get to his conclusion now you can read the full article I find it fascinating that he's looking at Roman history and comparing it how historians uh, look at Roman history and then how how the sceptics are not being fair in the use of history. So uh, it, it's such an extensive extensive article. Um, I think I'll leave it there because he, he doesn't conclude it, he goes on extensive research on other topics. So uh, I'd have a read of JP Holdings uh, article on the date and authorship of the Gospels if you're into reading like scholarly material and he's, he's put here quite an extensive bibliography at the back of his article so to follow it up in research but if you want to compare how uh, people look at Roman historians and how they how we know they wrote history and why they wrote history the method that they use for the method you scholars use today to attest the authenticity of a Roman author and then compare it to the Gospels uh, you get a picture that the critics the, the people who attack Christianity are not being fair in the methodology. So this is a very good article and I'd encourage you to, to get hold of it. Okay. Um, I think... Uh... 
So we're just going to look at. Uh, so that that dealt with. Uh, So we'll go into another uh, video now. I'm going to cut it here. That that's just an introduction to compare Roman historian Tacitus, how we affirm that he wrote his work, and the way we do that, if we apply the same methodology to the Gospels, then we can clearly say X, Y, Z. These are the Gospel writers. The critics are not doing that. They're not using these methodologies, they're, they're just using hyper-skepticism and uh, this this article will help you to understand understand this, alright? Uh, we're going to just look more in detail about the authorship of the Gospels um, okay, I think this is from Truthnet, so it'll be good alright, God bless you